Passion can run deep for the truck. As a kid, your toy collection grows to electric-powered pickups and radio-controlled replicas. Then comes the day when you get behind the wheel. And for those who've gotten a little carried away with this boyhood fascination, they'll head to a place like Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, a wash in a sea of those sharing the same fervor. Those with mutant-sized devotion are also in Bloomsburg. Their obsession has become their racing dream. Today, they'll push things that much harder because a monstrous mob fills the stands. Ticket holders with more than money invested in trucks. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the best in MTRA monster truck racing. Today, from the four-wheel jamboree Summer Nationals at the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, it's the Monster Truck Thunder Drag, round four of the Penda Point Series. Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania is a quiet little college town in north central Pennsylvania, but for one weekend each summer, it's transformed into a trucker's paradise when the jamboree rolls into town. Now, after a night of cruising down Main Street and partying, the focus is now on the infield at the Bloomsburg State Fairgrounds. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. I'm in the cockpit of Paul Schaefer's Monster Patrol, but unfortunately, Paul was knocked out of round one. Now, as we prepare for round two competition, let's check in with my colleague, Army Armstrong. You come to Bloomsburg, you know you're going to see a lot of action, and believe me, we're not going to let you down on this one today. Going into the second round, listen to what happened just a moment ago. All the manufacturers are going to be able to come over with another vehicle in this number two round. Dodge takes a win, Chevrolet throws a couple of wins, and Ford throws a couple of wins. The big story here is that all the wins came out of the right lane on that track. That means the guy that has a quick qualifying time of the two races will get lane choice. Keep an eye on them. They're going to go to the right side. It seems to be working better. Speaking of the right side and Chevrolet, finding the right combination, Dan Patrick and Gene Patterson, both of them used to work for the Bigfoot team. They come over now with the Samson Chevrolet and qualify into the next round with the quickest run ever, a 4-9 something. So the handwriting's on the wall. Bloomsburg is going to be the place to be for Monster Truck fans this year again. Back to you, Gary. Army with some highlights of round one. Here's a look at that first monster truck in the fours. Dan Patrick and the Chevy Samson, sponsored by American Gladiator. A watch on the run. Patrick had a very rough landing, knocking off the rear tire. And that sent Dan and Gene Patterson scrambling to get it fixed. But the word we're getting is he'll be ready for round two. Yeah, that 4.9 something wound up being a 4.98, Gary. Take a look now at the current standings. Andy Brass continues to lead over Paul Schaefer. Then Dan Runty is in third position. Round one competition, Runty goes up against Paul Schaefer. As we told you earlier, Schaefer was knocked out. Here is the run to put him on the trailer, and there's the margin of victory for Dan Runty and the Power Wheels Bigfoot. But you gotta remember, in this sport, a quick loser can possibly come back, so it's to your advantage to run hard. Schaefer goes, get this, a 518. He was on the throttle. There's a look at Kirk Dabney out of Columbia City, Indiana. He drives a truck called Overkill. He defeated Mark Hall in the Hall Brothers entry. Coming right at you. I like this shot, Army. Over our crash cam. Groundhog cam. Groundhog Pennsylvania. Cam. That's right. Groundhog <laughs> cam. Pennsylvania. In qualifying, Andy Brass. Now, Andy Brass, normally the first or second fastest in qualifying. Today, he was the sixth fastest. Had some trouble in qualifying. The problem, as you can see, it was, in, it was in the chassis. The horsepower was there. The truck just wasn't handling right. It wasn't going where he was pointing it. We're ready now for round two competition. The fast qualifier, Dan Runty, prepares to battle Gary Porter. Now we'll show you how Porter got to round two as we go back now to some highlights from round one. Gary Porter was matched up against Pam Botters. There's a look at Gary from Wadesboro, North Carolina in the Carolina Crusher. There is Pam Botters out of Hagerstown, Maryland in the far lane. And it was Gary Porter right at the very end really made up some ground. Exactly. Pam, let me tell you something. This Botters team, along with people like the Hall brothers, they're starting to close in on these guys. Porter won the battle, but he may have lost the war because he lost lane choice. This right lane is almost mystic about how much horsepower it'll hold. And you watch, everybody gets quick qualifying time. I'm predicting it's gonna go to the right side today. Right lane belongs to Runte, left lane, far lane. He's in trouble, Gary Porter. Oh, he hit that water barrier over there. Yeah, the Yodok barrier system comes in handy. They're the 
design right down the road from here, so if you're going to test one, I guess this is the place to do it. Well, you can see the damage, despite the uh, Hydra barrier, you can see the damage to the front of the Carolina Crusher. The front was crushed that time. Now watch again the right side of your screen. The problem is in the lane. Uh, Andy Brass had trouble over there. Gary is too. See, the trucks are not coming down straight. They're coming down goofy. Then they hit water barriers. That'd really be goofy. Yeah. You get wet and goofy. Eight pounds per gallon. That's a couple thousand pounds he's tagging there, but the barrier did exactly what it was supposed to do. It absorbed the energy, and if it'll absorb the energy of a 10,000-pound monster truck, they got to work for highways. Yeah, it stopped just on a dime once it hit that water barrier. There they can survey the damage to the truck, but Gary Porter is okay. So we'll take this break as they clean up the lane and come back for more of round two competition. Back for more of round two action. Uh, Army standing by with Gary Porter following that altercation with the uh, barrier. Gary, what uh, do you have any idea what caused it to go like that? Well, Army, you know, I knew I had to launch the truck really hard off the light, you know, to take a uh, Bigfoot out. And, uh, you know, that's what I was doing. I was trying to go for it all. It hooked up really hard on the line. When I landed over the first set of cars, it felt sort of like a rear axle shaft broke or something. That's what made the truck turn. And, uh, you know, when I felt it turn as bad as it did, I knew there was no use trying to get it back. You know, I just slammed on the brakes. I seen the pole coming up, you know, and I tried to turn away from it. And uh, it surprised me how hard those water barriers are. As we take a look at the damage, let us also mention Dan Runty turning a 5.03 in that run. As we look at his teammate, there's Andy Brass in Bigfoot, and Brass will go up against the far lane overkill with Kirk Dabney. Now, Dabney's teamed up with Marty Garza. Garza's out of the great state of Texas. He brings some knowledge from that side. Dabney comes from Indiana. He's a Hoosier. He brings some knowledge there, and together, they're going to be players before this year's over. They run the mid-motor setup. They run a new concept in suspension. They seem to be able to put horsepower down, but they're in the bad lane. Whoa! Oh, but he pulls off the victory. Made a fool out of me. Well, he was a faster <laughs> qualifier than Andy Brass, but Brass, because of the last round, had lane choice. But Overkill takes the victory. Andy Brass almost crashed there in the shutdown area. Yeah, but the big story is what happened in No Man's Land. First jump okay, No Man's Land. Our groundhog camera show you he was crooked at that last jump, Gary. Kirk Dabney wins it. He's with Army. Good win, but more important than that, it came out of the left lane. How did you get it to work in the left side for you? Well, Army, we go out there anticipating a hard run against Bigfoot. We really knew we were down on the lane. We just really put that out of our mind and give the truck 110%. That's what happened. Can anybody else win out of the left lane? Um, I really don't know. I would say the left lane pulled around. I was a little out of shape. I'd like to be over in that right lane. Well, there's a look at Fred Schaefer's barefoot, the Samson truck taking on Fred Schaefer. Unfortunately, the two Dodge teammates squared off in round one, and it was Fred knocking off Guy Wood, who was driving the Dodge Express this weekend. There's a look at Fred Schaefer at a pontoon beach, Illinois, and here once again, competition from round one. You know, in any kind of motorsport, there's a thing called chemistry. Pit crews have it, drivers have it, everything. Brad Schaefer lost the chemistry that he had last year. And that's not taking anything away from the guys he's trying to put in that second truck driver's seat. There's just something missing. Well, Fred had to knock out his teammate to make it to round two, and Patrick now in round two, trying to back up that 498 from the first round, the fastest ever, the first monsters in the four-second bracket. He can do it, he's in a good lane. Oh, no! Now, will that be a DQ? I believe so. The rules say both tires had to hit the object you're jumping. There it is, it's official. Samson has been DQ'd. It was going to be a quick one. There's Fred Schaefer's barefoot at 5.25. That was a good run at a 5.25. The right here is where Samson gets disqualified, misses with the left rear. And now we're gonna show you some videotape highlights of my run earlier today, Army. What do they say? The difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. Welcome back to Bloomsburg, where Ford trucks present the McCarthy Tire Summer Four-Wheel and Off-Road Jamboree Nationals, where you'll find true trucking aficionados and armies with one right now. Well, Gary, when you go to these events, you never know who you're going to run into. Hey, our old buddy Ed Bruce from Trucking USA showed up. Hey, welcome, Ed. Hey, Good Arnie. seeing you. Good to see you. It's great to be here. I heard this was the biggest and the best. Oh, I tell you what, they're from all over the country here, and you know you get to travel all over the country each and every week. I do, too. I think the secret is you and I got the best jobs in the world. 
It may be, you know, trucks have always been a big part of my life. Actually, I learned to drive in on an old 1950 F-100. That's been over 40 years ago. That's when you were one years old, right? Yeah, yeah that's that's close enough. I'll tell you what, we're getting ready to go with some monster truck racing. Thanks a lot for coming. Have a great time. That's what jamborees are all about. My pleasure, Arnie. Thank you, buddy. Nice to see Ed Bruce here as we're ready for semifinal action. We take a look at the Power Wheels Bigfoot against Bigfoot, Overkill, and Barefoot. So a good mixture of trucks there, but the first pairing will be Bigfoot. You get down into this thing, it's a Dr. Scholl's special. You know why? Three of the four trucks got foot in the name. So you get paid the big money for coming up with lines like that. Well, of course, you have this analytical expertise because you can tell us why that left lane has been so bad. All the winds coming from the right lane today. Army earlier looked at the left lane. Gary, what we're looking at here is the starting line in the uh, left lane of Bloomsburg. Look how deep they've dug down in the track. This is about an eight or nine inch depth on the right side of the passenger side of the truck. Now, come over here with me. On the driver's side of the truck, right here, it's only about three or four inches that's been dug up. So what that does is basically set the chassis. We may have found out why these guys are having trouble with this lane on the track. They're actually setting a little bit cock out on the starting line, so when they hit the first jump, it throws the truck out of Kelter, and they never have a chance to recover it. Back to you, Gary. In this sport, they want weight transfer front to back, but not side to side. We prepare now for a big foot shootout Couple of vehicles that are identical. Firestone, Firestone. Ford, Ford. Supercharged by BDS, BDS. <laughs> Keep going. What you're saying is these trucks are almost identical. Yeah, if you're in the decal business, you got all kind of decals out there right now. All the sponsors represented on the side of these guys. And you know, they do bring a lot of exposure to their national sponsors, and that's what it's all about. Looky here. Boy, Near lane. Oh, Runte really drilled press. He got the whole shot, and it was all Dan Runte. Dan Runty caught a brass asleep at the wheel. Boy, that's something you just don't see. No, well, the ET wasn't there either, a 560, so. Take man, a look oh, again, man. but the left side there, lane nearest the camera, and a big hole shot, a big margin right there for Dan Runty. And here is Dan Runty with Army Armstrong. It looks like a real hard race between you and Andy, but it looked like he had some kind of a problem on the starting line. Were you aware of that? No, I wasn't. He he didn't say anything. We all got radio communications. He didn't say anything on the line. It appears he lost his brakes on the line, so he had to go up to neutral to stay at the line without falling through into the red light beam. Um, it was real tough. I I figured he'd be more of a run than that, with, but with the problem like that, you can't do anything but what he did. Well, Kirk Dabney in his first Final Four appearance of the year will take on Fred Schaefer. Earlier, Army had a chance to talk to Fred about the caliber of competition in today's pin to points race. Everybody's running real close. Closest times I think I've ever seen at one of these races. So uh, everybody's out there trashing to get those few hundreds uh, in between rounds. That's what we're looking for. It's amazing on a course where you're running 10,000 pound vehicle, it does come down to hundreds and thousands of seconds, doesn't it? It sure does. The qualifying, you can see how close the, close the qualifying was. It was real, real close. Closest I've ever seen. Well, there's a look at Fred Schaefer, Pontoon Beach, Illinois. He pulls up against Kirk Dabney, the overkill. Dabney's in what we've been calling the good lane. Schaefer goes to the bad lane. He referred to qualifying. The qualifying quickness can put you on the good side of this ledger. And that's where Dabney is right now. You talked earlier about Fred Schaefer losing some chemistry. Well, maybe he's getting the chemistry back this weekend. He's overdue for a good run. Oh, man, everybody in the whole world thought he was going to dominate this series just like that run. Well, he did dominate that when the far lane takes the victory. Fred Schaefer, five seconds. A good ET for Fred Schaefer, the best run he's had all season. Well, the world record is a 498. He goes a five. Maybe he's found a handle, but the big story is what lane was he running in, Gary? Well, he's been running in what we call the bad lane. So for him, anytime you win, it's a good lane. Man, oh man, and he, it looked good. It looked smooth. Well, a five flat, that's awesome. And here's a look coming right at you. This is your, what are you calling this? The Groundhog, Groundhog cam. cam. Yeah, we're in Pennsylvania. That's exactly what it is. Uh-oh. We just lost the Groundhog. There's Dan Runte and the Jim Kramer looking over the lane as let's go down trackside and talk to Fred Schaefer. On these national points now, you're doing exactly what you have to do, and Andy Brass is not. He Maybe the luck's changed. Do you feel that way? Army, uh, that time we just ran there in that last round, uh, we're looking real good on times, and uh, 
uh, if I can back that time up, we'll be looking real good in the final. I think we're going to go back to the right lane. <laughs> That's the worst lane in the world those guys want to hear over there. We'll see you in the final. Thank you. And that will be coming up, Fred Schaefer and Dan Runte. Stay with us. This is Fred Schaefer's qualifying run as we welcome you back to Trucks and Tractor Power. Now, most people know when to heed the warning, don't try this at home, but not the men who pilot the tough trucks. They watching the wings get all fired up. Now, this is John Donahue in his Toyota, and he spits something right off the right front corner. Yeah, but Gary, you know, they talk about trucks. Well, we don't need no stinking trucks in Bloomsburg to hit the tower. As old Leroy comes out and turns into an instant crowd favorite with his non-truck appearing vehicle. Yeah, full-bodied Chevrolet for Leroy Weichel. Now, watch this as he charges the hill, and it looks like he snaps the front axle. The bomber class beauty if I've ever seen But one, listen Gary. to the crowd. Now, these guys were all charged up because Ed Bruce was here today. And from the short wheelbase division, this is John Mooney rounding the bend and setting sail with his Jeep. And watch as he encounters rough seas. Boom. Well, I'll tell you what. Another broken axle. Da, 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 da. But this man, Jan Klinkner, was the toughest of them all on this day. We saw him last week in this relatively clean classic Jeep Wagoneer. Gary, I'm telling you, you don't need no stinking truck to hit that tire. Jan <laughs> is an instant hero. Yeah, a world-famous person all of a sudden. Check this out. Look at the people standing in ovation, just like the NASCAR boys. Looks like That's victory right. lane at a NASCAR race. I thank my sponsors. Top Trucks, one of the many entertaining facets of these jamborees, which offer a little something for everyone. Browse the manufacturer's midway and pick up on the latest of aftermarket parts and accessories. There's also several categories of show and shine competition. Contact the special events promotion company and take part in the four-wheel fun. We are now set for the finals. Fred Schaefer and Dan Runty. There is Runty. To your right, Fred Schaefer on the left. It's Ford against Dodge. No Chevrolet today. Schaefer has lane choice. He's in the right lane, putting Dan Runty over in the far side. And earlier, Army asked Runty about that lane. Yeah, I kind of figured that was coming, Army. You walk out here and look, and that right side's a little better. We looked at the left lane. Jim and I did. Actually, the left lane doesn't look as bad as I thought it did. I think we can come out here and run a good race in that lane. We'll just have to wait and see what it boils down to. Okay, it's final run of the weekend. You got all week to put it back together. Does that change your mindset? We have a little bit of kamikaze in here right now. Yeah, we sure do, Army. It's like Jim and I were just talking about. He said, unless if you're really crook and really out of shape, he said, you're gonna have to stab this thing for all it's worth. All right, very simple strategy. Hammer down in the near lane. Nearest to you right now, Fred Schaefer. We're talking the Dodge Ford, but you also got Firestone and Goodyear. You got bragging rights. Sponsors' names on the sides of the vehicle. They're both going to the lanes. All right, Fred Schaefer near. Dan Runty the far lane. This is for, as they say, all the marbles here in Bloomsburg. They leave together. First jump together. No man's Looks land, like Gary. The Ford. Yes. The Ford. Dan Runte in the far lane. Dan Runte takes the victory. Fred Schaefer at a 5067. But look at Runte, 496. The quickest ever. The quickest ever, a 496 for the Bigfoot Power Wheels team. Dan Runte doing the driving in the final on a beautiful pitcher perfect run. Both drivers, nothing to be ashamed of here. This is a clean race. And there is the margin of victory as we go down trackside, Army. The fastest monster truck run in the history of the sport is 4.967. Dan Patrick was the first to go into the Ford today with a Chevrolet, but you guys with the Fords came back and went, that's the quickest ever. We've been shooting for Fords all weekend, Army. I don't know what to say, but got to thank the great crew we got, Bob and Ford Motor Company, for letting me be out here. I love it. I'll tell you what, you're, you're doing a fine job. You're an awfully good driver. When you came into the thing, Jim, come over here real quick. You got to be proud of this kid. You guys are the quickest in the world now. He's coming on. I tell you what, we talked about it. We, he knew what he had to do. And the truck, we kept getting a little more. We're squeezing the truck tight. I got to admit that. But this Ford's coming on. The Firestone's bit. Fastest time. Fastest monster truck ever. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey, if I was going to buy a pickup truck tomorrow, what kind should it be? Better go buy a Ford. 496, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. 
You can hear the emotion in Dan Runte's voice. As Runte uh, closes just a bit, he's second in the points. Brass continues to lead, then it's Schaefer, Paul Schaefer, and Kirk Dabney. So a big day for Dan Runte and the Bigfoot crew. The Power Wheels Bigfoot takes the victory here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Hope you enjoyed today's fast monster truck racing. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news and exciting video release from Diamond P Sports. Bring the excitement of mud and monster truck racing into your living room with Diamond Peace, newest horsepower hit. Trust me, you're in there with this third strike. Shake, battle, and roll three. It's all new and all you come to expect, from the outrageous mishaps of the monster truck racing to the raucous rampage through the mud bogs. Shake, battle, and roll three is a must for any and every monster truck fan in the house. Over 60 minutes of jarring and pounding mud and mayhem and accelerated aerobatics you don't want to miss. To get your copy of Shake, Battle, and Roll 3, call 1-800-438-8585 or send $19.95 check or money order plus $4 shipping and handling to the address shown on your screen or charge it on your MasterCard, Visa, or Discovery card. Call 1-800-438-8585 for Shake, Battle, and Roll 3.